Hello everybody and welcome to this edition of TED Talks with TEDx Darbar Mag. I am Upal Majumdar, Head of Practice Tourism with Dolma Consulting UK and I am here to share some of my ideas on how I feel things are going to go moving forward. During this term, this pandemic, it's been going on now for about a year and a half, the hospitality tourism industry has taken a major beating. You find airlines grounded, whole fleets grounded, hotels empty, and of course there's a lot of you know, people being laid off, and we don't know how the future is going to be. It is definitely very, very uncertain. During these uncertain times, however, we also got to see a lot of things changing, probably forever. One of them, of course, is people. The hospitality and tourism industry is all about people. It's people-to-people -people contact. And from there, we moved to a contactless world. And that is what this pandemic came in and made a big difference to. However, we've had our spate of lockdowns. Countries are still under lockdown. People are still bottled up at home. And the good thing is that once this is over, and it will get over very, very soon, we will find everybody willing to get out of the house, take that holiday, make that trip, travel somewhere, and what have you. And that is what we look forward to. But however, it's, the going is going to be very, very tough. We started this, this whole thing from 2020 about work from home, and that became the norm. A lot of companies and corporates could afford to do that with their manpower, sitting at home, logging into machines and doing their work. But unfortunately, in the hospitality industry, in the tourism business, a lot of that work could not be done from home and it needed people-to-people -people contact. And because of that, what happened? People stopped making those contacts, they stopped sitting on those flights, they stopped going to those hotels, and they stopped moving out and traveling to those things. What started off, of course, is a lot of private holidays. People get into their car, travel to a nearby destination, be there with friends and family. And a lot of small hotels and resorts started doing well because they were small. We didn't want to go to those big places. So how is this going to come back? And what is the difference which is going to happen? And that is really the big, big challenge. To travel, you know, international airlines, so many of them have more than 85, 90% of their fleets grounded. And it's not so easy to quickly start an airline back. Now, when the business starts coming back, you need all those aircrafts to go through those airworthiness checks. Those are expensive. There might be a huge amount of unpaid leases and those leaseholders need to be paid all that money before you can fly any one of those aircrafts off the ground. Pilots, the, the, the main guys, the engineers, they all go undergo regular certifications, maybe twice a year and definitely once a year. Many of those would have got lapsed. So many of them have been without jobs on furlough, might have already gone off and moved into alternate careers. So it's not so easy to start all that off. Hotels might have cut down inventory, they would have shut down rooms, they would have closed down parts of their business, laid off huge amount of employees. And when we start seeing how is the business going to come back, they really don't have so much of data to work on. You know, revenue management in hotels is a very, very important function. And they always predict how it's going to go. And based upon that, the budget is made. Now, that is always based on past figures. If you look at the figures of 2019 and you look at the figures of 2020, you really don't have too much to go on. So what does it get back to? A gut feel? Is that how it's going to, is that how the future is going to be? So that this is really where you, we need to do a rethink, do a step back and really change the way we look at this whole business. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So what do we do next? How do we go forward? So I've uh, met a lot of experts, spoken to several people, attended so many Zoom calls and net seminars, spoken at several of, several of them. And, and then I thought to myself, how is this going to go forward? So what I'd like to put forward is the, taking the right step. What is the step? The S stands for safety. Today, the primary concern which any person would have is how safe am I when I'm going to travel? So this is of paramount importance. Now earlier, when we looked into hotels, when we spoke about safety, it was usually something called fire life safety and food hygiene. 
and for that we had certifications and various kind of things. For airlines, of course, there's a hugely mandated security. You go through security, you sit, even the seat belt fastening is a security process and that is completely checked. And then when you visit places of tourist or historical interest, there are a lot of safety precautions there. Don't lean across the bar, take care, wear protective clothing or jackets uh, if you're going, you know, parasailing or something. And that's what safety was about. But, but if you see all the safety was regarding keeping your body safe. It was about protecting the body. And now it's not about just protecting the body. All that remains, but now you also protect inside the body and you have to ensure that your safety processes are in place so that a, a guest or a customer who visits any of your businesses does not catch an infection or fall sick. And that has now become the biggest challenge all over the world. And as such, as tourism organizations, businesses connected to tourism, if we do not take these, all these steps, no one's going to visit us. Nobody's going to take a risk of falling sick. We've all heard the horror stories, especially with phase two of COVID, of so many houses within our friends, families, people, you know, who left this world just because we could not contain the virus. And that is why safety has become so much important. So in that, various things happened. A lot of things have, have taken place. And you need to critically look at your own business and see, are we socially distanced or not? Two things come to my mind. One is, you know, social distancing, very, very important. And the second is, how do we prevent infection from being present in the atmosphere and how do we get rid of it? One of the most successful stories in tourism during these last one year has been the Maldives. And the reason they've been so successful is, of course, you went there with a PCR test, you got down, they took a test, they would test everybody. But most of their tourism was island tourism. You went to a resort in an island and everybody lived on that island. And you were the only guest going there. So once you've done your test, you're cleared. And they just said, don't wear your mask. There is no need of any kind of restrictions. And you had a super holiday just like it was back in the old days. And that is what a guest would look forward to. If your institution is safe, if your flights are going to be safe, and how are you going to do it, whether you take care of the filters, and when you look into hotels, restaurants, you know, how good is your room getting cleaned, and there are a lot of, you know, uh, whole standards around this which are being done. But then comes to a place where you take your mask off, which is in the restaurants, and how is that going to be? A lot of, uh, you know, uh, pressures now to sit outdoors, have fresh air roaming through, and not have air-conditioned places where the same air is circulating again and again and again. If that is there, you need to put in filters. Maybe the same standard as that of an aircraft, which weeds out viruses, bacteria, not just dust and moisture. So if you have those, great, those places are going to come up. And we need to tell that to all our guests. Make sure that it's not just our guests, but also our employees, the people who are tending to all your guests. How safe are they? Are they coming to work? with worry on their forehead that for my livelihood, am I going to fall sick? And that has happened a lot. So, or how is it going to go forward where we take care of them and we take care of our guests? The second part of step is T, which is technology. The world has gone digital. In fact, one good silver lining of this pandemic is that what would take a digital adoption or putting in technology in our lives which would take four to five years, has happened in less than one year. Today, everybody understands barcodes, they understand QR codes, they understand how to scan it, and they understand how to order everything off a mobile phone. Now, how technology-enabled is your business? Many organizations went ahead and put in technology, but that worked parallel with the human being. So, you might check into an aircraft, but you still have to go to the counter to give your baggage and get a physical boarding pass. So all that needs to change and technology needs to get inducted. People, you need to give people choices. People don't like to be told what, what they can do. They want it to be something which is very, very easy for them to use. And that's what the E for step comes in. How easy is it? Is it, it has to be very simple and uncomplicated for consumers and for customers. And that is why it is very, very important that how do you un uncomplicate all these steps? If you make it very cumbersome, people are not just going to use it. Let me give you a very simple example. You want to book a flight. You Maybe you want to fly from destination A to destination B. And where do you buy your air ticket from? 
chances are you go to make my trip or booking.com or you go to one of these kind of sites because it's far easier to, to navigate. They already have all your data rather than going to that airline site. So you do use that airline, but you don't use that airline website because it's quite cumbersome. You load a whole lot of data. You have to go through various choices and you don't want to do that. You want to, you go down to an aggregator. He tells you, you want to go from point A to point B. These are the cheapest fares available on ABC sites. You go to those sites, you fill in destination, give your credit card. And after that, it'll ask you, what is your name? What kind of, what's your nationality? What are the passport details? What, how much luggage you want to book in? And it, and it's so easy and they keep that data. The next time you go, it says, hello, Paul, how are you doing today? Uh, and then when I'm kind of about to pump in and then it gives me two, three leisure destination pop-ups, think these are the deals which are available and they keep coming back to me. Of course, it's my choice. I can turn that service off, but I like to keep it on. I like to know what kind of deals are happening so that I can keep planning my future travels, my future holidays. And that is where technology is become making it easy and helps to engage with, with, with customers. Today, you know, you're on, a, you're on a hotel, you're already in your room. What do you like to have for breakfast? What are the choices available? Any hotel can make its own app. It's very easy. I find, you know, hotel chains have apps, you know, Marriott's, the IHGs, and the Hyatt's, they all have apps. But individual hotels don't have apps because customers want to know about these properties. Those days of IPTV are gone, where you went through huge, large advertising and you and you hit it on maybe slide seven or slide eight, the kind of restaurant you wanted. And by the time you're reading it, it's already moved to slide nine. And there you're looking at the swimming pool, which maybe you don't want. So is that app available? Can we engage? Can we make a booking? Can I make decide by menu? Can I give a time when I'm going to be there? And that's how easy and uncomplicated you need to make it. You know, today, most hotels have RFID locks. They, but you need to upgrade the technology and give the key as the digital key in the guest phone. So when the customer provides all his data, you've got everything. Why does he need to go to a front office, stand in a queue, socially distanced, wait for some time, then somebody in a mask wearing a white overall hood is going to give him a key and say, this is your sanitized key. Hey, use technology. You don't need it. You let him get an RFID key on his mobile phone. And that's it. He walks into the hotel. Imagine the welcome message say, say, dear Paul, welcome back to the hotel. And here is your key. I just walk up to my room and it gives me directions. I go straight to my room, push my phone onto the door lock and bring it opens. Imagine that's how easy it has to be. And that is where things are going to go forward and make a large difference. And the last part, which is P of the step S for safety, uh, T for technology, E for ease, and P is processes. Now, all this will not happen if we do not make watertight processes. They need to be well thought out. All eventualities need to be coming. Teams need to work together to put all these processes together. And when, as a, as a customer, I need to ask somebody something, do I pick up a phone and make a call? Somebody needs to pick up that call. Can I send a text message and somebody responds back? Well, somebody needs to be there at the end of the line to respond back. And the best part is that today, they don't need to be sitting on your premises. They can be sitting right at home, on duty, getting back to consumers and customers and their requests. And so many things, opportunities come up. Well, you know, maybe your rates are going to be low for a period of time because it's competitiveness and business is low, but you can have opportunities to upsell and cross-sell and give that customer a really superior experience. And that is where how the processes will come in. And they need to be watertight, they need to be looked into and completely redesigned from step up. And only when we are going to be able to do that, will we be able to go ahead, take the right step and step up for your guests, for your customers, for your business and for this industry and wish you all the best. I'm sure it's going to come back and will boom again. Thank you very much.